Gemini. I know that you guys are going through an extremely transitional period right now. And as in all transitional periods, there is two things that are happening. One, hope that things are going to get better. Um, that the sacrifices as well as the risks you take in making those sacrifices are going to be worth it. And the hope that that is true, that that that's what will happen. But there's also that feeling of vulnerability, that feeling that if I put myself through all this and I expose myself in the ways that you do have to expose yourself in order to get changes to your life made, that not only will I not see results, but that I, my life will get worse and as in all transitions, it seems that the hard stuff comes first. It seems that the overexposure and the vulnerability and the feeling of foolishness and embarrassment and pain and things getting harder always end up happening first. So there is this sense of overexposure. There is this sense of being judged a great deal. And honestly, in a lot of ways, being judged by people that the truth is you do value their opinions. In a lot of ways, these people are people that you want to think better of you. Um, they are not many people. But there are a select few whose opinions you do actually care about because you have vetted them time and time again and know that they're good people. Um, in fact, it may have been dealing with a specific person that has been with you through thick and thin and who is just the almost like the holder of integrity that made you realize, wow, if they're pissed at me and they're done with me, then there is something going on here that I need to look at. Now, if you don't have one of these people in your life, it's just an overview of your own opinion. It's a personification of your own opinion of yourself, of the recognition that things have to change. There are huge transitions happening in your life right now especially with people that you associate yourself with and how much you're willing to allow sort of bullshit to sort of fly around you or be a part of the way that you live. The issue is actually changing. The change is the difficult part. And with that change, like I said in the very beginning, comes so many particularly difficult realities of, well, making the same choices even though you think you're making the different ones. I, it, and it's really complex, it, it gets extremely difficult to understand but wait wait a minute I thought that I was doing things differently um and then finding that you're in a situation where you just thought you were doing things differently and you really just made the same choice again which is why the frustration ensues which is why um there's no kind of new result or progress and that's the heart of the frustration here is thinking you've made a different choice and really having made the same one but in a different mask or a different person. I know that what you feel is foolishness and vulnerability. I don't know why you are judging yourself the way that you are. Why this level of, of self-criticism is so profound with you right now. Um, I 
I do understand why you would just want to be done with the suffering and done with the hurt um, and done with the people who you really don't want to be associated with. You really don't want to be around. There's a sense of being around people that you really don't want to be around, that don't make you happy, that aren't people that you admire or help you admire yourself. Tolerating specific individuals um, for the sense of getting things done or doing what you got to do or they have some sort of practical use in your life, but not really loving or feeling good about the associations. So as soon as you feel something, and as soon as you feel something is off, why not react right then? There's this sense of almost self debate that goes on inside of you but maybe this could happen but maybe this could happen but maybe this is a smart or maybe this is a good move or or maybe just wait a little bit longer because maybe it'll work out like this as soon as there is that temptation or um almost like open the doorway to that internal debate what's there to debate about if intuitively you know and understand that this is not the right people to have in your life, there is no debate because intuitively you already know where you're going to end up. And there's a lot of people that surround you right now that you have debated yourself into a friendship with or you that ha, you have debated yourself into allowing them into your life. And there is this wonderful transitional period that you're going through right now that offers a lot of change and renewal and new opportunity for you. So there is an inspiration, Gemini, for a purge of the people who just don't fit in there whether or not they are you know pre-approved i don't think that they are though i think that the people who actually care about you understand and realize and know that there there's just a lot of hold on a lot of garbage that you let in your life because it's kind of intriguing because it's interesting and you are a curious creature and you do love to explore and understand but how vulnerable do you let yourself get to these people it's almost like a mad scientist syndrome you know, how involved and how overexposed or hyperexposed do you allow yourself to get to these experiments that you know could hurt you in the form of people that you know are just not good people? There's so much of that in your life right now. Just people that are, that are around you or that were in your life that shouldn't have been shouldn't have been based on who's actually on your side and what's actually good for you to live, to be the best of yourself, to live your best full life. I understand wanting to associate with all kinds of people to learn all kinds of things, but it's just how closely do you allow them in? Because many times there is a sense that you are in control of the circumstance after you've already lost the control. After you've already gone too deep or gone too far into the experiment. And that's when the Jekyll and Hyde kind of duality starts to come out because you've sort of Mr. Hided yourself already. You know, you've already split yourself into two as opposed to staying whole 
and re recognizing that the only reason why these other people are in your life is because you've been able to divide yourself into two. And there is that recognition all of a sudden of, wow, I have a, like, almost like that recognition, wow, of the other side of yourself and how the hell did I become this and realizing a lot of it had to do with the justification of all this garbage in your life. So there has been this sense of, okay, all that crap that I've let in my life because of that Mr. Hyde aspect. What do I do with it? And taking it out little by little and what it makes you feel, just overexposed. That sense of overexposed because there's still that Mr. Hyde aspect, you know, to, the char to your character and they're the only ones that accepted it. Everybody else kind of like, it, this is almost like, like Mr. Hyde on display, right? You know, the ugly bits and pieces of you, for some reason, like all being put in front of a panel and just ripped apart and dissected. It's almost like your Mr. Hyde is now the experiment. And it's just this sense of really being fearful and hating that feeling. Hating that feeling of judgment. So it's a very volatile time for you. A time where you want to go and run and hide the hide. And just want to forget in some ways that he exists and want to sort of paste over what everybody has seen and said, nothing to see here, nothing to see here, let it go. But the more you let it go, and I think you know this from experience, the more you let it go, the more there is that sense of, I know it's not going to get better. Intuitively, I understand that ultimately, this is just going to keep getting worse for me. I know because I've been through this before. I know. I know, I've run from this before. And sadly, and not so sadly, because I have to say in so many ways, what you're doing is heroic. And I think the sad part is you don't fully recognize it because you certainly don't feel it. It's almost like we always feel like heroes are always supposed to have the S on their chest and feel really big and brave and, and I don't think that's true there's this amazing scene from um, from Lord of the Rings that really shows this energy a feeling like the gods are just not on your side and you've been completely abandoned and that you are hyper 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 exposed hyper exposed and extremely vulnerable as you try to do work that you believe in, knowing that you believe you deserve this change, knowing that your life deserves to get better, you know, but you feel hyper exposed. And this is beautiful scene from Lord of the Rings where Frodo, you know, where Sam looks at Frodo and says, he's talking about all the tales that they grew up with. He ta he's talking about all the heroes that they learned to look up to. And he says, do you think they felt like heroes when they were going through what they were going through? Do you think they felt at all like, the, like, like, like gods? Or do you think they felt like us? Scared and worried and worn out and tired and at any second like we're about to give up. Like that's probably what they actually felt like when they were going through all the things that we admire them for going through. Because, you know, when you hear stories or you think about heroes, all you get is the interesting bits of the story. You know, you get the E! Hollywood behind the scenes special wrapped up in two hours of really interesting, you know, bits. You don't get the day to day. You don't get the hour to hour. You don't really understand how difficult it is 
to be a hero and to change a life, especially not change your life. So you are working on something very hard and you are taking a leap of faith in yourself right now, but you are feeling extremely hyper exposed, completely vulnerable. Like every defense that you had or you were born with has now been turned upside down and it's almost stinging you. And you are trying to understand this perspective, this, this time in your life. You are trying to understand that, yeah, this is what I have to go through. You're trying to understand the sting. You know, you're trying to understand why you have to be put through this, this rigmarole of judgment or inquiry. Um, you're trying to understand the process. Uh, there is a definite effort here to try to understand or see both sides, not only of the circumstance, but also of yourself. To recognize why both parts of yourself are so important to who you are and why you need them both. It's like reaching across the aisle and, and grabbing the id, that dark shadow side of yourself and realizing, oh, I need you too. I understand why you're here. I understand how you protect me. And, and um, it's like honoring the id. It's honoring those darker aspects of yourself. And, and in doing so, presenting them to presenting that to others is, yeah, this is Dr. Hyde. This is what he has done and this is what he is capable of. Um, I'm not proud of it all, but this is why he exists. And this is why I need him. And in those truths, being able to start stitching back together those two aspects of yourself and realizing uh, not feeling so hyper exposed. Be loyal to what you love. You could be dealing with a Cancerian, you could be dealing with an Aquarius, you could be dealing with a Scorpio. There's so many signs on the table, most especially Aquarius and Virgo. This energy of really trying to make things better and having thought in some ways that you were helping others that you were doing the right thing and building what other people needed especially protecting others especially um, helping others to get their lives back together and essentially there is that realization suddenly of how much of a distraction it became to your own life how much of a distraction helping others became to helping yourself so there's a sense of getting back to what it is that you love the most and starting something new and realizing or applying the same loyalties that you do to others to who you are. And those, to those two very dynamic aspects of yourself. There is a sense of loyalty here. There is this energy, I don't know if it's specifically a person, but it, it could be very well manifested in a person that just really wants the best for you and always has. And in a lot of ways, somehow in the past, almost making fun of how innocent their perspective of you is, almost thinking that they only see the Dr. Jekyll but realizing it's not that, that way. There is a sense of, in other words, hope. Hope that yes, everything that you're doing right now, all the transition that you're experiencing does have this wonderful, magical, innocent, flowery side to it of you, your life will and can get better. Um, nothing is perfect, right? But there is this really innocent sense here. This is very Cancerian, maternal, um, something about a child, this could very well have be, be about becoming a parent or um, um, your child inspiring you in some way. Act as if, see this is the fake it till you make it card. This is, and I don't think it's that you're faking it to fake it to get out of something. I think you're faking it as a sense of um, trying to get, yeah. I think that you're faking it to try to get into, uh, like this is part of your defense right now. This is part of, 
you know you have to keep it together. And it's not easy right now. So you're just kind of like wearing the mantle until you can actually like ex shed everything and whew, like both Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde can sit on the fucking couch together and just like smoke a cigarette or, or relax for a little while. There's just this sense of you're in a situation right now where there is definitely eyes on you and public persona matters. And then we get back to learn from the past. And learning from the past is almost like you've already learned from your past because intuitively this is Pisces, this is Taurus energy, this is Pisces energy. So this could have something to do with uh, finances, but usually this has to do with defensiveness. There is that sense of elephant energy of of something from your past being hyper exposed or, or something from your past having taught you, helping you to suddenly understand a lot of things in a more deeper, complex way. And then we have time for a deep dive. And this is Libra energy, which is a very comp, um, um, compatible energy for you, but it's also Venetian energy. It's love, it's romance, it's partnership. There is this almost like this hyper realization of why you chose this person. why you chose this person in your life to begin with. And also this strategy in some ways to let being you expose how being with them, I don't know, to let being you, to let the best of you be seen to sort of demonstrate the worst of them. But it's beyond pleasing the crowd. It's that this has to seep into you. This realization has to seep into you. It's not about what everybody else thinks. I know that will make you feel more protected and powerful, but it isn't about what everybody else thinks. It's about what you realize and what you've learned. Like, how did I get myself into this circumstance, this situation? Hmm. Let's see what the angels have to say. We're going into angel and spirit guide messages now, uh, Gemini. Okay, Gemini. So here we go. Mindfulness was the first card to pop out. Be mindful of another, another's feelings and needs. Someone needs your love right now. A loving thought is all it takes. Inspiration. And I can't help but think because this card came out too, that you are inspired by a specific somebody that you know has been overexposed or hyperexposed to life or life in general because of the decisions that you've made. And this person is at the source of why you want to change or why you want to make these changes, being hyper protected. And, and I know this sounds accusatory. You could just want to change the people in your life or your life circumstance or want to move, realizing that it's almost like in a lot of times, in a lot of ways, sometimes we can't decide that we deserve better. But the way that we make ourselves move into a better place for ourselves is by putting, almost personifying all of that need on somebody else, something outside of ourselves, in order to help us understand the reasons why better. So it's almost like somebody outside of you. It could be a child. It could be a love. It could be a, a family member. That somebody that you just admire and want the best for. It's this person that's become almost the reason why you would keep going down this very difficult path for you. 
inspiration, a new idea comes to you like a gentle whisper inside your heart. Listen and take action. This is inspiration from high above. It's like you've been you've been sent this. You've been sent this inspiration. You've been sent this idea. You've been sent this vision of an ideal for the reason that that's what you need right now to keep you moving forward. Because in a lot of other ways, you would just fall back. Creative potential. You are, by nature, infinitely creative. Life is a sea of creative potential just waiting to be expressed through you. You are free to express all your heart desires. You are just an amazing vessel of creativity, Gemini. And it's this beauty, it's this beauty that has almost in a lot of ways been trashed by the, the people you've associated with, maybe that wanted to get too close to you or wanted to just have a piece of you or a part of you. Um, there's a sense of the reason why all these spirit guides are just making you pay attention to this is because that's where they want your focus. That's where they want your attention. And that's the way through. That's the way to not feel exposed. That's the way to not feel vulnerable. That's the way to become defensive or defend your vulnerable parts without becoming that Dr. Hyde defensiveness that splits into two. There's just that sense of believing in that innocent aspect of yourself, believing in that creative potential. Archangel Raphael is here. Feel yourself surrounded by my emerald green light. I, Archangel Raphael, offer you healing and solace. The storm clouds will soon clear and the sun will shine eternally bright trust so if you have felt been called to green if you've seen like little when you close your eyes little green lights or like you know like little green almost like apparitions there's a sense of this this angel constantly being around you wanting to offer you help wanting to offer you protection and direct you in the direction that you need to go. There's a lot of angels present right now in your reading. Archangel Uriel. A great spiritual transformation is currently occurring both in your life and in our world. This is the union of heaven and earth, spirit and matter. Two extremes, right? Heart and mind unite in harmonious balance. And so you're being given this inspiration, this create that, that you can focus your creative potential on in order to give you that focal point that combines, that will bring both aspects of yourself both into harmony, back into harmony. And then Archangel Sundelphin is here. I have heard your call for help. Your prayer will soon be answered. So there is a sense of keep praying. If you've been talking to God and you've been talking to angels, keep doing it because they are listening. And they're also giving you what you need to get you to where you want to go. It's like they know just how to work with you. Trust. And we got this for the second time because this came up in another card under Archangel Raphael. All will work out well. We, your angels, are here to nurture, protect, and heal you. Trust in the healing power of our love. We love you more than you will ever know. And so there's this wonderful sense here of if you feel like you've been abandoned and you feel alone, you are not alone. And that love is love and you are eternally loved and that even the people who seem to not love you anymore, if they ever really loved you, they, they still do love you. Them getting out of their, your life is 
may be a strategy for them to heal um, a part of the process that they have to go through simultaneously, Gem Gemini, they still love you and they still want the best for you. Just because they can't walk side by side with you right now does not mean that the love isn't still there and the prayers aren't still going out for you. So you are not alone and you do not need to put yourself into the presence of all those people who just want your Mr. Hyde, who want your base self. They do like, don't, I know the temptation is there because there's a sense of, but I want to be accepted for that as well. There are people already loving you and accepting you for everything that, that you are. And right now they may not be able to be physically present in your life, but their heart and their soul and their wishes are with you. And then last but not least, miracle. Our wings of light surround you and those who and those you love. This current situation is governed by a higher power. The forces of love are at work. All will turn out well. And that is the perfect entrance into our tarot card spread. I will see you guys over in the extended. The link is below.